What's happening? Crypto Farm Happy Happy Friday. Good morning and welcome back to Love for Crypto. I'm Scott. It's a pleasure to have you here. Well, yeah, thanks for taking the time out to consume my content. So this morning, my head's a little bit ooh, because I've been thinking about adoption and maturity, right? And how people think the internet has matured. Or most people, I like to generalise though. So I was thinking, it kept me up a little bit last night when I noticed this article. I'm thinking, shit, that's crazy. So, DLT, DLT, distributed ledger technology, that includes cryptocurrencies, digital assets, blockchain technology, the internet of value, merging with the internet of things. DLT as a whole is going to be bigger than anyone realizes. I've said so many times about uh, machine to machine payments, per second payments, the micro payments, the the autonomous lives are going to be living in the future. But I don't think anyone really truly gets it. In the same way, most people don't really truly get where the internet's been, where it's come, how far it's came so fast, and how many people still don't have access to it. Yeah. People will like to talk like the internet is globally matured and adopted technology. It isn't. It actually isn't. So regarding DLT and the internet of value, I understand we're all fingers crossed, open and praying for gains before 2025, and I truly think we're going to get some gains before 2025. But as I've said before, if you're not looking beyond then, if you're not looking beyond 2025, you must be 70, like, and worried you're not going to see 80. You know what I'm saying? Because... There's no other excuse, in, in my opinion. Anyone sub-60 should see themselves with another 15 to 20 years left in them. If you don't, maybe try and get a little bit healthier. Um, there's ways and means to do that. Anyway, it will be 2025 onwards for not only mass adoption, but maturity beyond 2030 with the autonomous living machine-to-machine -machine payments will continue to grow just like the internet has. So, since 2010, how much do you think the general person would say internet usage has grown? How much the general person would say it's grown about 25% since, since, since 2010? In 10 years, it's grown about 33%, a third, 50%. It's grown half. Internet adoption has steadily increased over the years. It's more than doubled since 2010. So despite its wide, widespread use, a significant portion of the global population still isn't connected to the internet. And in certain areas of the world, the number of disconnected people skews towards higher percentages using information from data reporting. This visual highlights which regions have the greatest number of people disconnected from the web We'll also dive into why some regions have low numbers and take a look at why countries have seen the most growth in the last year. The, te the, the top 10 most disconnected by number of people. Now, these are the ones with pretty low percentages, but because you've got India's like 1.5 billion people, there's a hell of a lot of people. But the smaller countries with more percentages disconnected. Now, 50% of India is not connected to the internet. 685,591,071 people, to be exact by numbers. China at 41% has 582,063,733 people. Uh, that's that's people disconnected. Pakistan over 142 million, Nigeria over 118 million, Bangladesh 97 million, Indonesia 96 million, Ethiopia 92 million, Democrat Republic of Congo 71 million, Brazil 61 million and Egypt 46 million. The lowest percentage there was Brazil at 29%, then Indonesia 36% and then everyone else was above 40. If not in the 80s, Ethiopia was 81%. Interestingly, India has the highest number of disconnected, 
disconnected people, despite having the second largest online market in the world, that being said, 50% of the country's population still doesn't have internet access. For reference, only 14% of the US population remains disconnected. Clearly, India has some untapped potential. It's extremely interesting. China takes second place of all 582 million people not connected to the internet. It's partly because the country is a significant rural population. In 2019, 39% of the country's population was living in rural areas. Um, during a pandemic, a third of elementary school children living in rural areas weren't able to access online classes, while only 5.7% of city dwellers weren't able to log on. The top 10 most disconnect disconnected by shared populace. <laughs> Fucking hell. North Korea, 100% of people disconnected from the internet. <laughs> not even got the top. I thought, uh, I'm not going to lie. I've just been schooled. I thought North Korea was more like China, where they all use Tor and that, and all the Prime Minister tells them that they win World, World Cups and shit, but I thought they could actually find out, like, like Chinese, you know what I mean? 100% of people legitimately disconnected from North Korea. It's 25,722,103 people. South Sudan, 92%. Eritrea, 92%. Burundi, 90%, Somalia, 90%, Niger, 88%, Papua New Guinea, 88%. <sighs> Fucking millions on millions of unconnected people. <clears throat> now, when we think of that and compare it to blockchain adoption, do people really think that they're going to reach the fucking moon next year? Honestly, guys, like it's time to wake up a little bit to the distance this is going to have legs for, if, 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 if that's a nice way to say it. The internet still has legs globally. They've not even... No, we talked the other day, like, well, when it was talking about reach with the internet, and it was all about reach. We can reach here, we can reach there, we can reach there, send an email here, send an email there, reach, 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 reach. Excuse me, when they got the reach to most places, it became about speed. Speed and reliability, speed and reliability. Oh, excuse me. Now, we act like that ended. I mean, I did. I act like it ended. I was like, yeah, it did. Internet's adopted. Fully matured. That, that, internet, that internet thing's fully matured, isn't it? <laughs> Is it fuck? Is it fuck? <clears throat> Blockchain adoption is not only is not only waiting for certain regulation and stuff like that it's waiting for systems alongside it to either catch up or be built with a foundation that can carry an internet of value forward 5g you can't have millions of autonomous vehicles without 5 or 6g because 4g can't handle the amount of devices it's just it's just the way it is. It's science, baby. Can't have it. Now, seriously, I really, I was, people need to just sit back, take a big, deep breath, and recognize this will truly start kicking off for me. 2025 and beyond. Just like the internet. Oh, excuse me. Just like the internet truly started kicking off in 2010 and beyond for most people. Most people didn't have a smartphone um, not too long before that and it was, it was in the very, very early days of the smartphone innovation. Now, second nature to own one or two of them, innit? Do you know, the thousand pound phones, mate, and it's like, the oh, fuck the main takeaway is <clears throat> we can use our knowledge the way the internet the internet guys did so whether you was just an investor investing in Amazon and Twitter and Facebook and Apple and then 
10 to 15 years down the line you had a right nice little butty there available and do the same in blockchain just invest in a few digital assets and wait it out bam you got some pennies there come up with your own project come up with your own dap help awareness spread news increase attention on different projects there's the number of things that we can be doing <clears throat> with the knowledge that you gain um from this technology i'm getting there with a whole network so we're gonna show that off soon and we're gonna start trying to build on one of the machines some um some dlt tech and we're gonna have a look at some carder samples some codius hosting and Stuff like that. It's just a shame I ain't got a PC big enough to do an XRP validator. Otherwise, I'd, I'd be doing one. I'd be doing one. But the production nodes require quite a bit of RAM, quite a bit of RAM space. So I believe um, if anyone's doing an XRPL validator node with low RAM, let me know how you're doing it because every page I land on it tell, like, tells me I need 32 gigabytes of RAM. That's a lot, man. It's twice what my PC's got. You can do a test node with eight gig, but you need um, 32 gig to do production nodes. So if you want to see a little bit on the, the home network, head over to Instagram or Facebook because I did share a little video on there yesterday, just, just showing the switch and the router off and that and some of the data that comes through and the camera system. So it's, it's pretty good, man. It's coming on. I can't wait to... Um, to share it proper and I'll, I'll be going through it at dlt con as well obviously so stay tuned for that and get in touch if you want a little consultation so the consultation regarding the networks i'll just we'll just have a chin wag on zoom or a whatsapp i'll send you a load of links of where you can buy the gear from and and you you go and buy it and fit it yourself and you know i'll 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 show you the way forward for the tiny little price <laughs> now um, the quotes will be for me to actually install it for you so you can have a consultation on we'll send you a design and a few little tips and what you're going to want here what you're going to want there how to extend how to expand your switch and stuff poe and stuff like that just so you know what you're doing or you can just pay me to fit it for you it's entirely up to you um but yeah if you're interested give us a shout and you know the dance wishing health and happiness to you and yours Get alpha, get happy, enjoy it guys. It will not last forever. Yeah, enjoy the weekend. Hope you had a good week. We love crypto. We love it getting adoption. We love IOV, but it's gonna take time. We love you as well. So until the next one. Peace. <laughs>